Hi there everybody, it's UK independent demonstrator Halsey here from slimandstylish.com and I have a really simple card for you today. This one is really, really simple and it's using one of my favourite stamp sets but when I actually had it out at a workshop recently I was asked after the bow and how I'd done this. So I will show you how to put that together. It's really simple but I will put it together for you now. It's using the perennial birthday stamp set from, I think this was an annual catalog a couple of years ago, and I love it. It's now a cling stamp set, my one isn't, because it is a little bit old, but it must be one of the most used stamp sets that I have. So to make this card, I have got my card base. As usual, I have thick whisper white you can get the two different weights the thick one and the thin one I have the thick one it's an A4 piece of paper cut in half and scored in half to make the base I then have my matte piece I'm using balmy blue for this one for this one I used seaside spray okay this is 10 centimeters by 14.3 centimeters and then I have a piece of whisper white for the top this is nine and a half centimetres by 13.8 centimetres, so it will create that frame around it. And that's the bit I'm gonna be playing with first of all. I've already got my stamps mounted and I'm using the Memento ink pad. I'm just gonna pop a piece of grid paper underneath because I stamp off the page for this one. So I'm just gonna ink that up. And start off there with the first stamp. And then I'm just gonna do a frame, one either side. One, two. The sentiment I'm using, I could have used any of the sentiments, but I've decided to use this here to celebrating you. I don't quite like that. I just stamp that up, ink it up, sorry, stamp it up, ink it up, make sure it's the right way around, and stamp that down. That is it for stamping, so I'll put my lid on there because I have a habit of leaving the lids off and then putting either my elbow or my arm in them and I get covered. So I've got my balmy blue blends, my dark and my light, and then I've also got the light granny apple green. So with the granny apple green, I'm using the thick edge and I am just colouring in the leaves, not even being tidy. I've been so lazy with my blends this year. I mean, if you know me, you know I love blends. But um, I keep doing these cards where you don't have to go to the edge and you don't have to be precise. And I'm like, oh, just, just quickly. And I think people are going to think, she's really getting blasé with these pens now. She's not even doing it to the edge. Um, but sometimes I think if you don't go all the edge, it just provides a burst of colour. I do quite like that too. especially when you're doing quick and simple cards. So I've just put the dark in a couple of the ridges randomly and I'm just gonna come over it with a light. And that's all I'm doing for the color. Simple. So I don't know how long that took, but that was the majority of my card making done right there. This is the metallic edge ribbon. So I'm actually gonna cut a couple of pieces of this off. I'm going to cut one that just overhangs the card, probably by a centimetre each side or half an inch each side. And grab my piece of scrap and I'm using the dark balmy blue on the brush tip. And I'm just going to colour that in. If you're doing this at home, it's best to wait for it to dry. I'm obviously doing it on pay on film, so I don't want to wait for it to dry. So I'm just gonna use my paper to help dry it, but normally you'd wait for it to dry and then it goes quite stiff and it's a lot easier to actually use. Now using my grid paper, because I'm not very good to do this straight, I'm just gonna run a straight line down there or straightish, <laughs> and I'm going to stick my ribbon down the line. 
like that. And stick it down on the behind. There we go. So that's the first part. The second part is going to need a slightly longer strip of ribbon. So I'm estimating probably about that much. Okay, and then I also want to mock or draft make up a bow so I can work out how long I need for a bow. One day I do think I should measure and then I will know just to cut where I want for the bow. So I'm gonna want just a little bit longer than that, so probably about there. Okay, and I'm going to colour these two in as well, the exact same way with the dark balmy blue brush tip. One, two, with these, because they're actually going to be in the bow and not hidden around the back, um, I haven't totally bothered going all the way to the ends previously but on this one I'm going to want to go all the way to the ends because the ends will show on the card so before they're normally tucked around the back they're actually going to show here so I want to make sure I've got all of my ribbon if you wanted this to be um, continual because my ribbon is dark in some places, light in another, and I do quite like that. If you wanted it to be block, then that's fine. The way I'd suggest doing that is sticking it on a long piece of grid paper, and I'd put a bit of snail on the edge so this bit stays in place, so it holds still. Do the whole bit in one brush stroke, and then just cut the bit off where the snail is, and you'll have it all one colour all the way along them. Or you could use your stamping refills. You could either use them as they are or add a bit of water in to dilute them if you wanted them a lighter colour and dye the ribbon. But like I said, I don't mind that mine is patchy for this project. Sometimes I do, this one I don't mind. So what I'm going to do before I do the bow, because that's quite fat there, I'm going to turn this over and stick it onto my base and get the card made up first. I don't like trying to stick snail onto cards that aren't even on the other side. It just creates a bit of a seesaw, I'm not that keen on it. And then... Okay, so first of all I'm going to pop my bow in, there's my bow, I'm just going to make my ears a little bit smaller. with that. She says just she's still filling and I'm going to chop it from the inside out so it's got that nice tail on it. But I'm just going to cut that one a little bit more because I don't think it's even. Then with this one what I'm going to do in the end is I'm going to halve it like that. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to cut a really deep up there and really deep up there. So it's not like just a slip across, it's a deep cut. And that one is going to sit on the card and I can position that exactly how I want it so that it can go around the words that's going to be at the bottom like that. And I'm going to be using some glue dots to do that. glue dot down and I want that one to go over there like that and then I'm just going to pop 
pop a glue dot underneath that half and fold it back. Okay, so that's like that then. I'm going to stick another glue dot on top of that ruffle there. And I'm going to stick the bow on. And that is exactly how I've done the bow on the card. So for anyone who was at my workshop and asked, that's how I did it. Um, you can always put another glue dot underneath that if you are worried because it is going to be a little bit heavy but generally that will hold it and it just gives a slightly more interesting ribbon aspect I think. So this one is in Seaside Spray, this one is in Balmy Blue. I hope you enjoyed it. The stamp set is Perennial Birthday and in case you wanted to purchase this ribbon it is the Metallic Edge ribbon. We have one in Whisper White with a silver edging and we have one in cream that has a gold edging so there are the two different types and you can colour both of those. You can head to my store slimandstylish.com if you go up to the top banner and click buy you'll be able to add these into your shopping basket don't forget to use the host code. If you've enjoyed this video do subscribe I put out regular videos and my blog is slimandstylish.com and you can check there for any regular updates. Thanks for joining me everybody. See you soon. Bye.